Welcome back to this new part of Homemaker's Garden where we started in February. At that point, this whole area was grass and weeds and very strong weeds actually, <laughs> including quite a lot of bindweed, which we, if you've been following these uh, videos, you'll remember seeing it before and like, here's some actually just growing. This bed though was only made three months ago that little bed there and so everything with no dig you've got this beautiful possibility you can lay cardboard compost on top plant straight away and that's what we did there three months ago so those plants like the fennel they went in on the 18th of August and there you go <laughs> it's a pretty impressive result in that time and what there is though still the bindweed there so this method does not outright kill perennial weeds no dig is fantastic if you can get enough compost to make that initial large amount to start quickly uh, but you can also do no dig with a smaller amount and start more slowly. Here I've gone for a bit in between in most of the area which we put cardboard on through late February, March, early April with around seven centimeter three inches of compost on top and then towards the end of April I saw the bindweed coming through I'm like, oh craggy so we've actually used quite a bit of black polythene to grow some vegetables which are wide spaced like the brassicas there, Brussels sprouts and some kale for example. Uh, we're also trialling a bit of wool under the black polythene just to see what difference that will make, I don't know yet. Uh, it's because I was given some by a neighbouring farmer, they're struggling to sell their wool, it's crazy. Uh, you know this, this is a market garden and, and we don't struggle to sell the vegetables but the price is not brilliant, this, this is not a fantastic return so far uh, in monetary terms but it's very useful for me, it's very useful uh, to show you how you can do this and how you can do it on different scales, you know, so uh, also the double cropping, for example, these potatoes came from this bit of ground behind me where we've got leeks now and in the bed next to it we've recently sown broad beans. Uh, nearly all of this ground is still growing something if it's only seeds and these are charlotte potatoes which we harvested at the end of July and they've simply been in a sack in the shed and they store really well. You can see they're not sprouting or anything yet. That comes later when, after it's cooled down actually. This is late November, believe it or not. And well, no, mid-November actually. And look at what I'm wearing. It's, it's unusual, unusually mild weather. We're having 14 centigrade today. That's high 50s Fahrenheit. And we've had only two frosts so far. One was minus two centigrade, 28 Fahrenheit. So an unusually mild autumn. And then there, all over that area, we had black polythene. And after we harvested the squash, we had fantastic squash growing through the polythene. Uh, plastic is useful. It's useful for killing difficult weeds while you can still grow food if you've got a bit of compost underneath while the weeds are dying. We only ever use plastic on top and then roll it up after use before, in this case, planting new plantings, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, in that same ground. So let's have a look over the other side and we'll see some more vegetables growing. I'm learning all the time and this field has been a great experience to find out even more about no dig, which I've been doing nearly 40 years now. Like we used a bit less compost than I, I might have normally for starting out the seven centimeters and yet we're getting nice second crops like these chicory here they were full hearts that we put in salad bags to sell they're growing after onions so that was a crop of onions not huge <laughs> but nice crop and then the chicory uh, in the corner here we actually got after peas this was peas but it got well ravaged by rabbits there are quite a few rabbits here in fact just near where I'm standing we got a, a, a remote sensor camera and uh, Every so often I put that on and, and we pick up a rabbit or two, but also foxes, uh, because there's foxes actually, I think that's keeping the rabbits under control. And then recently some deer, and now I've been a little bit keeping an eye on these chicory because deer love uh, chicory and chard, and they are actually eating the chard a bit on the end, but we've got a lot of vegetables here, and so that does help to lessen the impact. And there's one or two absolute beauties, like this Romanesco, and that is growing after uh, up the peas, uh, so that was only sown mid-June and transplanted there in the second week of July and then had mesh over. So I'm using covers to keep pests off where appropriate. 
like these brassicas here, uh, you can see they're really nice. <laughs> We've harvested quite a few uh, broccoli and uh, cauliflower that were here, uh, but they had mesh cover on for the first six weeks that keep the insects off. And then I used the Bacillus thuringiensis soil bacteria spray against caterpillars about three times on these uh, up until say early October. And now nothing, you see we're really lucky here not to have pigeons. So I don't need to net them, but I will do if the pigeons appear. They are around at the moment, they're just not eating many vegetables here. And then, um, yeah, you can see more brassicas there. And then the amazing celeriac, uh, which very interesting, because I've got a comparison there between the celeriac in the old garden, which are not as big. But it, the difference was that I put a rabbit protection on back in April, sorry, May, June, when the celeriac were young, because I was afraid the rabbits might eat the plants. We had a lot of rabbit damage then. And that served to keep the aphids off. So we had very little aphid damage to the leaves where the plants in the rest of the garden I didn't protect because aphids are not normally a problem on celeriac leaves, but they were this year. That's where it can be tricky with pests. And normally you, you know roughly what's going to happen and when, and you can cover accordingly. But in this case, my main celeriac suffered, these ones didn't. They grew away really strongly. And that's the result. It's a variety called Mars, which I sowed in the middle of March undercover obviously and then we planted out there on around the 20th of May with that cover over and a month after that we planted the chard uh, around about that time we transplanted multi sown beetroot there which have grown very big and that's fine I like big roots they store really well over winter uh, I found I was just chopping up some really monster beetroot to roast for lunch today and it's juicy and tender it's amazing so big roots is good especially you know when you grow no dig like this Organic no dig, no, this is no fetal fertilizers. It is just the goodness in the soil, which is stimulated by the compost on top, which feeds the microbes, which make the nutrients available to plant roots, linking up to the mycelial network, which is in the soil. And as a result of that, you can see fungi popping up all over the place. That's the, the, the surface growth of, of the mycelial network all different mushrooms, um, most of them inedible, but that's fine. <laughs> we do get some that we can eat as well. And then um, because of the other big advantage with no dig is you've got very few weeds. Uh, undisturbed soil grows few weeds. As you can see here, you know, we're not weeding much. And it means you can do things like popping in new plants between existing plants. So there's an unusual new plant there between the beetroot, which actually is rye. I'm having a little go growing some rye to harvest some ears for grinding. I've got a little grain mill. Uh, to make some bread. I've no idea if that's going to work. <laughs> Maybe it won't, but it's, I've, I felt it's worth a try. I just sowed some of the rye grain I have that I'm grinding at the moment, that, which makes the bread. And uh, some of it's actually been eaten by slugs, so it's not all brilliant, but, but we'll see. And then beyond that is uh, the mustard, which, and, and actually some greens as well, some salad greens sown in early September after clearing the polythene that had the squash. And you can see amazing growth that's made. It was about 10th September that that mustard was sown. So two months ago, it's a fantastic green manure, you could call it, or cover crop. The idea of, of those such plants is that you grow them. If, if you've got ground in the growing season, which is uh, not growing anything at the moment. And so you sow seeds and you get some cover basically. And it's also roots in the soil, which feed the microbes, which keep everything busy. Soil never needs a rest. It, it wants to be growing something all the time. However, when we get to winter, which is fairly soon, I think it will cool down, and then everything goes dormant. And that's when I don't worry. I'm not trying to sow anything in winter. I'm not worried if I'm, back. I'm not trying to start a cover crop in, in the winter time. You know, by, by about the middle of October, in my book, there's, there's no point in sowing anything more, but it's very nice. You can see the ground's all covered. Uh, it's covered either with growing plants, growing vegetables that we're gonna pick soon or through the winter or it's covered by cover crops or it's covered by compost and that again comes back to no dig that you've you've always got a surface mulch on the ground whether it's compost on the beds and we're using a bit of wood chip on the paths which is preferably older wood chip we put it on about this time of year this is still the compost that we put on in march this year and that's mostly greenhouse compost actually which has done all right I've got some heaps here, uh, probably about three years supply there now. Uh, green waste compost, that's from people's garden waste. And then there's a bit of old cow manure there as well. And there's some wood chip, which um, I 
paid a nominal amount for to the local tree surgeon. Well, actually, it was £30. Uh, you know, it's £60 for three tonnes, £20 a tonne. Uh, but you can often get wood chip for free. I'm happy to pay a small amount because it covers their costs as well. And we're using that in the pathway. So we put a bit of that in the paths. We're putting around about three centimetres every autumn. Uh, here we're still putting on a little bit more. We maybe put five centimetres on over there, uh, including some homemade compost, which I'm now bringing in here because uh, we're making quite a bit. And that, again, stimulates the microbes really well because homemade compost generally has more microbial value. And let's finish the video by just having a look over at the shed and to see where I'm hoping soon that we'll get a pond. This is one other aspect of the new area here where I got permission to put up this shed. I call it a shed. <laughs> Some people call it a chalet. It is quite big, as you can see, and it's really nice space for storing things. But I'm not too clear quite what I'm going to use it for more than that at the moment. Like this whole project, it only started in January and there was no plan. So I've been thinking on my feet as we go, really. And th this has turned out re really nice. I'm very happy with it. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's useful for storage because obviously see the onions there. Although, actually having said that, those onions would be better in my house and that's why they're going right like today. Because <laughs> it's, it's quite damp here. This is just uh, no, no insulation. It's just uh, wooden edges and roof and it does get quite damp in there. So the last bit of the, the project for this year will be the pond, which is right there where I'm looking <laughs> towards the hedge. I haven't precisely decided the exact spot but more or less and my son Jack when he's got a bit of free time he runs a contracting business he's got a digger <laughs> and he's going to dig a pond and that he's going to be arriving here in probably a couple of weeks and we'll see how, how that goes it's going to be quite muddy mess for a while so you'll see that in the next video all being well and you'll also see actually well you'll have seen by now uh, we're we've been making video about the bees who are in the far corner so that that's been a fantastic part of, of having this extra land and to find out more about how how I've done it all I, I brought up my book actually which is well it's one of 11 books I've written now uh, there's a later one a sequel to this even which is called skills that's coming out as I speak in in about a month mid-December uh, this one came out about a year ago and it's it, it details the procedure that we've used here which is noted gardening <laughs> from weeds to vegetables easily and quickly and it's about smothering surface weeds, whatever you've got, uh, using whatever materials you can get hold of in this, often cardboard, but it can be other things, plastic, compost on top of that, plant into it. And I hope also you'll come and join me towards the end of winter. We'll do another seasonal update, see what's happened here in the winter. We'll hopefully see the pond there. And it'll be exciting then, series of events next year. Uh, again, I do not have a plan, but we'll see what happens. There's clearly more space here. Um, more things will happen. <laughs>